that much more. Just endless bits and pieces. Tony Palmer once knew every frame of film. Possible cutting copy. Just a mess. In the 1970s, he toured with Leonard Cohen and made a documentary. But through a disagreement, lost control of his film. <coughs> For 38 years, the raw film was lost to him until Palmer rediscovered it. And here we are. It says exciting sync roll 187, which, I mean, now you can't tell, but originally we had to absolutely hammer these open. 294 rusty cans of old celluloid shelved away in Hollywood. So we never found the negative. Um, we never found any complete prints of the whole film whatsoever. All we found was bits and pieces and these sort of endless cans. Painstakingly, the new old film re-emerged. I loved you in the morning of kisses deep and warm. It's an intimate romp with Leonard Cohen and his band on tour in Europe in 1972. Cohen was 37. He invited Palmer's camera to shadow him with two conditions, show his poetry and his political side. My deal, as it were, was that he would give me complete access to anything that went on. He would never, ever shut the door on me. And he agreed. I mean, it was a, it was a, um, a meeting of, of friends and, and true minds. Cohen was by then wildly popular. His songs already immortalized. Yes, Suzanne takes you down to her place near the river. His band cut a wide swath through Europe, and Palmer's camera captured the unscripted moments. Uh, I don't have any plans. Why? You don't have any place? Any pl no, I don't have any place. Do you have somewhere for me? <laughs> yes, <laughs> a lot. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's hard to come on to a girl in front of the camera. What? <laughs> it's that feeling that you just happen to be there. You just happen to be there when he's chatting to somebody else. You just happen to be there when he breaks down in tears. I don't have a good voice. Every, everybody knows that. So anything that is popular, anything that is really popular, is often not really good. I wrote these songs to, to myself and to women several years ago. I wanted to tell one person one thing and now I am in the situation where I must repeat them like some carrot chained to his stand, night after night. Won't you come over? But the intimate portrait often reveals more than a person wants, and that may have been what happened with Cohen and his filmmaker. In Jerusalem, during Cohen's last live performance for a while, he struggled on stage. It doesn't get any better. We'll just end the concert and I'll, I'll refund your money. Some nights one is raised off the ground and some nights you just can't get off the ground and there's no point in lying about it. He stopped the concert and escaped with the band backstage. And I, I can't make it, man. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like it. Period. So I'm splitting. No, you're not. No, you're not. The camera then perhaps felt too close. All he said was it was too confrontational. It's in your face. Later on, he's quoted as saying that he felt towards the end of the film he looked completely exhausted and completely wasted. That was the word he used. Well, he was. That's what we were filming. That's what made it fascinating. Cohen took the project away, all the film, and hired someone else to edit another version. I gave him all the material. All of it? Yeah, all of it. All of this, this stuff? Yeah, all of these, these now rusted up cans, absolutely. Palmer moved on, made dozens more films on famous musicians, but the Cohen project always felt like a missing piece. I'm told that he has seen the film. He has an amazingly efficient international website. He sent a message uh, via this website to me to say, um, I'm very relieved this problem finally has been resolved. 
So although I've been through misery for the last seven months reconstructing it, and although I went through 38 years of misery wondering what had, it's a lost child, you know, wondering what had happened to it. In fact, it all worked out in the end. Tony, it's been wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Susan Ormiston, CBC News, London.